the declutter effect. This week, we have an exciting episode lined up. We're diving deep into a game-changing book that has revolutionized the way business approach content marketing. They Ask, You Answer by Marcus Sheridan. I love the title. By the way, this is the second time we're sort of reviewing a book in our podcast. I remember the first one was a few episodes ago and was about Atomic Habits by James Clear. And um, we'll link that episode here. To kick things off, let's start with a quick overview of the book They Ask, You Answer. It's not just a book. It's a philosophy that has transformed how companies connect with their customers through content. And in the book, Marcus also anchors on an important concept called the tie-up philosophy. You introduced Mark Sheridan, the author, to me as someone who will take his readers on a journey through his experience of turning a struggling pool company into a multi-million dollar business by simply answering customer questions through content. I can't imagine how he was able to sell pools when, in fact, there are a few people who are in need of having a swimming pool during his time. Mm-hmm. That's right. So it's very interesting how he positioned his product to make a multi-million dollar business out of selling pools. Selling pools, yeah, right. You'd be surprised. It may be a lucrative industry. So one of the key takeaways of the book is the idea of being customer-centric in your content marketing strategy instead of pushing your products or services onto your audience. Marcus advocates for genuinely answering their questions and addressing their concerns. Mm. This builds trust and positions your brand as a valuable resource. And I like the emphasis on what you said, which was building trust and positioning your brand as a valuable resource. Because some brands nowadays, they really miss the mark and end up in branding oblivion. That is a challenge in terms of marketing and positioning your brand. There are a lot of brands. There are thousands or millions of brands out there. So how are you going to make your product be on top of people's mind? Top of mind, yeah. And make sure that they will have this specific behavior of buying your brand over and over again in order for you to be profitable as a company. Repetition, yep. That's because of lack of understanding of what their clients want and need. Oblivion. You're talking about the being yes. and the branding oblivion. Precisely. Yeah. Now, in the book, uh, Marcus introduces what he calls the big five. The big five. Mm. Which are five key types of content that address the most common questions customers have. Mm. Well, we'll delve into each one of them and discuss how you can leverage them in your content marketing strategy. Okay, so let's start with the big five. First is pricing and cost. And this is particularly important for someone like me who grew up taking advantage of sales. And, you know, I always go to the discount aisle, especially in groceries. I like buying, I don't know, like canned goods with free stuff that are bundled into them. That is very common here in supermarkets (laughs) in the Philippines. I know in the U.S. as well. Yeah, they have like the dollar store and all those price sensitive or price conscious products. So yeah, first is pricing and cost. People want to know what something will cost before they commit, of course. And how can you use this to your advantage? I think the main point of his philosophy when it comes to pricing and cost is how confident are you in terms of placing your prices on your website and your Mm -hmm. social media. Okay. Because it can go both ways. Yeah, as we know, there are a lot of people who want to negotiate at the back end of their social media in order for them to entice people to buy their Uh, product. Or avail of their services. So most of the time, Mm -hmm. price is hidden. Because it can go both ways. You can either attract the right client or you can also drive them off if they get scared that your prices are too much. And you also want to still have that level of flexibility. But yeah, this is very important piece of content. So his advice is you have to have that kind of confidence and audacity to put your price on your website Mm. so that people can filter if they are really for the product or not. Okay. Next is problems. 
which is all about addressing common problems and challenges your customer face. This not only positions you as an expert, but also helps customers see you as the solution. Hmm. I remember we have a previous episode where we talk about looking for what is the enemy of your brand. So this is quite similar in the sense that the problem is the enemy. So in this case, you are zooming in or focusing on a particular type of problem that your business or your brand is addressing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, third is versus competitors. And in our country, in the Philippines, we're still quite discreet with calling out competitor brands and businesses. We're still conservative that way. But in Western culture, particularly in the U.S., they're very in your face when it comes to calling out competition. One very famous rivalry is the one that's between McDonald's, Burger King, and Wendy's. And Wendy's has the funniest um, Twitter account. They've been super popular throughout the years with their comebacks when it comes to calling out McDonald's mm-hmm. and Burger King and their products. Yeah, another popular example is Coke and Pepsi. Pepsi, <laughs> yes. Where, do you remember that commercial? You had when, to say Coke because yeah, yeah. you used to. <laughs> yes. uh, there's this one kid who wanted to buy a Pepsi in a vendor machine. Unfortunately, he can't reach the top in order for him to get the can successfully. What he did was he used Coca-Cola, yeah. He, yeah. he, he stepped get on the Coke cans. Uh, I remember, Coke I remember. Cans, That's yeah. very clever though. Very, very clever. So yeah, particularly in the U.S., they're very used to asking the question, how can you openly compare your products or services with competitors? Sometimes it's not even just comparing, but really trying to throw shade at your competitor products. <laughs> that is true. I remember you telling me stories in your old advertising days when where it's actually unethical to name the competitor it is, brand. It is, here in the Philippines at least. Yeah, in uh, the way we practice it here in our country, we use brand X or XYZ. But you will see in the ads or commercials the color of the yeah. competitor brand. <laughs> it's actually funny because it you're they trying to be discreet it. about it. They blur it, but you can still see that it's their competition. At least it's not upfront and straightforward to the point that you're going to. It's throw very some... respectful type of pulling down your competition. So, next is reviews and comparisons. This explores the power of user generated content. And Mm -hmm. how it can influence potential customers. Yeah. This one is the most effective by far, at least for me and how I see it in the landscape. Especially in platforms like TikTok and YouTube where content creators do honest or maybe not so honest reviews and unfiltered reviews of a product, service, or industry, what have you. I'm curious to know that prior to the social media age, Do you remember if there are a type of user-generated reviews they have before which were advertised either in print or TV? Yes. Actually, even like in tomato sauce or something, they have client love or customer testimonials um, plastered on the actual package or ads on TV, Trimedia before, and newspaper. So before the advent of the internet, there's still UGC or user-generated content. But let me correct myself. It's not user-generated content because it still goes through the marketing and advertising body of that brand. So UGC is very new. It's very new. Very new and very unique in a sense that users were able to advertise. Yeah, the power is in the hands of the users on this one. Yeah, totally agree. And finally, we have the best in class. What does it mean to be the best in class in your industry? And how can you showcase that in your content? Personally, I look for this as much as I can when I'm researching a product or if the best in class is beyond the price point that I had in mind. I'll go to the next best in class. So it's still a perfect way of doing consumer research. Best in class or next best in class. Yeah. And as a consumer or customer, you have to be diligent in how you buy something. You don't want to end up 
with buyer's remorse, which is the worst. As so many of us out there do. Yeah, buyer's remorse is the worst. But then the best in class also has its limitations because it depends on the perspective of the one who is reviewing the product. Well, there are still the cream of the crop type of products like in clothing or in cars. There's a huge difference between the best in class and the more cost-friendly but not high quality. Do you think a certain product reviewer or influencer can be objective when it comes to their claims as this product is the best in class? There are, especially um, in TikTok, there are a lot of content creators and reviewers, product reviewers, brand reviewers who are very, I would say, brutally honest to the point that sometimes it's even detrimental to a brand. So yes, for me, at least user-generated content is trustworthy. For me, the effective approach is whenever an influencer or a product reviewer tells you that this particular product is not the best, but it's really positioned in if the product is for you, then you go buy it because... Yeah, at the end of the day, it's still your choice. There are a lot of product reviews right now who are subtle when it comes to imposing to buy a certain product when it's not really the best. Mm, but I think it's sponsored. You, yeah, it's, it's <laughs> but that, that's required now. They are required to disclose, whether in the video or also as part of their video description or social media content, even on Instagram and YouTube. You have to categorize your content as paid sponsorship so that it doesn't affect or persuade your audience mm-hmm. or your followers. They know that you're being paid to say these things so they can make more informed decisions. Right. Now, transparency is a big theme in They Ask You Answer. Marcus emphasizes the importance of being open and honest with your audience, even if it means discussing potentially negative aspects of your products or services. This is what you're services. talking about. Yeah, yeah, precisely. How can you strike the right balance between transparency and brand image? And to tell you honestly, there is no such thing as a perfect product. It depends. Yeah, it is on the hands of the user. How perfect their perspective of the product is. And yeah, we've seen incredible success stories emerge from companies that have actually applied this philosophy. And also, the book provides a roadmap for implementing the They Ask You Answer philosophy in content marketing strategy. We will link the book in the show notes for reference in case you, our dear audience, don't have it yet. That wraps up this week's episode. And we do hope you've enjoyed our exploration of They Ask You Answer book by Mark Sheridan. Short exploration because there are a lot of valuable (laughs) content that you can apply if you are a brand or if you're trying to establish establish yourself as the brand. Yeah. There are a lot of insights here in Marcus' book. Yeah. If you're looking to transform your content marketing strategy and build trust with your audience, this book is a must-read. 100%. Yeah. Thanks for listening. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to our podcast so you never miss an episode. This is Team Declutter signing off. Take care, stay curious, and bye Bye for for now. now.